Good morning. I'm Bill Deal, President of the Greater Houston Port Bureau. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome to our April Virtual Commerce Club. Uh, as we get going, I'm just going to uh, do a few housekeeping rules before I introduce our featured speaker, Captain uh, Reginald McKinney. Um, one thing, you're all joined in, and as people sort of log on and stuff, we sort of go through the details, but those who have been on before, we know. Um, you're joined in listening on only mode, but you can ask questions as we come up on that portion of the presentation in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. So, and also you can upload questions that you like that you see someone may be putting down there. We are recording this webinar and uh, we'll make that available to you when we get a process. We have also asked uh, the captain if we could share his slides afterwards. And he has agreed to that, which will be important because you're gonna see it on the screen behind me. And don't worry about the details. We'll be able to give you that in a follow-up email. So anyways, as we get going, I wanna thank our sponsors that make this possible for us. Um, they're gonna be on the screen here. And I'm just gonna back up and, and announce them. Enterprise Product Partners, the Houston Pilots, Intercontinental Terminal Company, Kinder Morgan, the Marriott Houston Hobby Airport Hotel, Moran Shipping Agency, Regents Bank, Targa Resources, and the West Gulf Maritime Association. Today, uh, Gap McKinney, McKinney is here with us at the Port Pier, and we got a few guests in here with us as we're trying to work our way on our first step back to in-person luncheons. Um, next month is going to be our uh, first hybrid event. So um, what we're gonna allow is 100 members to join us at the Marriott, the one off the feeder road by Hobby. And, and then we're going to do the virtual part just like we're doing here today. So we're kind of working our way back from COVID. This is our first step to have him in here with us. We're going to try a few things. Uh, if we're perfect, great. If we're not, don't worry, we'll get through it together. Um, anyways, next month, we have an exciting speaker. It's going to be uh, Terry Trough with the uh, Shell, the general manager for shipping and maritime for the Americas. She's going to be talking about decarbonization and how we can work together for specifically with shipping and things like that. So it should be exciting. Anyways, it'll be good to see everyone. We're going to be limited to 100, so uh, and it's members only at the, at the hotel itself, okay? Um, and everything is geared up back towards in August, we are going to have our dinner uh, in person, uh, and we get you signed up for that. We already have about 35 tables signed up for that, and we may cap it at, at 60 or 70, depending on what the room will hold. So if you want to come to the dinner, which is always a great event, it's going to be in person in August, and we're working our way back to that safely. Okay. Uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, the chairman here. Uh, basically, happen. Uh, McKamey was appointed to the Board of Pilot Commissioners for Harris County Ports, I just call it the Pilots Board, uh, by Mayor Turner in the Houston City Council last year. And then earlier this year, in January, the, uh, the Houston City Council and Harris County's Commissioners Court get together, and they actually have a joint vote over who's going to be the chairman of the Pilot Board, and they voted on him in January. So quite an honor to get that support behind you. He comes to this position with a lot of experience. He went, uh, started out at uh, the U.S. Mer uh, Merchant Marine Academy in Kings Point, uh, graduated from there and went sailing and worked his way up the fleet uh, to earn his unlimited master's license. He had that for 39 years and sailed a variety of ships ending up on the big tankers that Exxon uses. Uh, so he has that experience as being a master on a major tanker. Um, basically, as he was doing that, he got a MBA from the University of Southern California, and then his law degree from the University of Houston. He practices as, as an attorney in Houston now, and if you look it up, you can see there's a lot of recognition for the, the work he does as a lawyer. While all that was going on, even more impressive, he, he did a career in the Naval Reserves, and he went up through the ranks of the Naval Reserves and made captain and was in charge of the of several command, uh, military sea lift commands. So 
He really has quite the portfolio of uh, leadership and maritime. We're happy to have him in this position. And I'm going to turn it over to him and let him get going with the presentation, Captain. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Captain. Uh, and I want to thank you for having me here today uh, to give this presentation. Uh, I want to thank the mayor, uh, Mayor Turner, City Council, uh, County Judge Hidalgo, and uh, the County Commissioners for giving me the opportunity to be the chair. Um, it is an important uh, port in the United States and in the world. And so it's, it's uh, quite an honor for me, and I take that to heart in every decision that I make. Um, today, what I'm going to do is uh, talk about uh, what the pilot board mandate is from, this, from the uh, government, from the state legislature. And uh, then I'm going to talk about uh, those uh, individuals that make all of this happen. It's not just me as the chairman. Uh, we have a, a lot of individuals that uh, work with the pilot board uh, so that we can do the mandates that the state of Texas has given us for the uh, ports of Harris County and uh, Houston. So uh, with that, I will uh, start uh, with uh, the 11, uh, the 11 items, I'm sorry, with the uh, uh, board composition. There's uh, two pilot commissioners appointed by a majority of the city council of the city of Houston, two pilot commissioners appointed by the majority of the Harris County Commissioner's Court, one pilot commissioner is appointed by the city council of Pasadena. Uh, one pilot commissioner is appointed by the county mayors and councils association and two pilot commissioners are appointed by the governor. And uh, the chair of the board is, is appointed by the city uh, and the county. Our present composition uh, is uh, myself as chair, uh, Michelle Bechtel, who is the uh, uh, mayor, uh, who is a mayor, he is uh, the, uh, appointed by the Harris County Mayors and Councils Association. Uh, Ms. Frances Questioneda Dias, who is uh, appointed by the Commissioner's uh, Court of Harris County. Uh, Mr. Roland Garcia, who is the vice chair, he is uh, appointed by the City Council of the City of Houston. Mr. Brad Hance, the City Council of the City of Pasadena, appointed by the City of Pasadena. Mr. Paris Beverly, he is uh, appointed by the City Council of the City of Houston. Uh, Mr. Uh, Beverly is a uh, graduate of the U.S. Uh, Merchant Marine Academy, and he sailed uh, for Exxon for a few years before he went to graduate school and worked in uh, logistics. And he has also taught at the Texas Southern U University. Uh, Mr. Daryl Morrison, he was appointed by the Commissioner's Court of Harris County, and uh, Bruce Oakley and John Kinney, who were appointed by the governor of Texas. Uh, Captain Deal has gone through my background. Uh, I appreciate that, and there's not much else to say. I am board certified in personal injury by the Texas Board of uh, Specialization for Lawyers, and I'm also a certified public accountant. Uh, and I have two sons I'm very proud of, Reginald, who is a playwright, and my son, Ryan, uh, who is a cybersecurity CEO and an Army veteran. Now, the commissioners. Uh, uh, we went through, uh, Roland is the vice chair, and uh, he is also chair of the diversity, diversity subcommittee, which I think is very important for the uh, Port of Houston, the pilots to represent the, the um, the population that is uh, uh, in Harris County, the diverse population. Uh, Ms. K uh, Castaneda Dias is the uh, treasurer of the pilot board, and she's the president of the East End Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Michelle Bechtel is the mayor of Morgan's Point. Mr. Daryl Morrison is the president of HTS Consultants. He's the chair of the U.S. Coast Guard Liaison uh, Subcommittee. Uh, Brad Hance, the president of uh, MECO, is the chair of the Navigation Subcommittee. Mr. Paris Beverly, uh, who was an uh, adjunct and, visit and visiting professor at Texas Southern University, uh, 
Mr. Bruce Oakley is an attorney and John Keeney is the mayor of Taylor Lake Village. So you can see we have a very uh, diverse board and we also have a very, uh, uh, a, a very, uh, a board that is uh, well-trained in different areas uh, of the of port and, and of the city. Now, uh, the uh, board was created uh, in 2019. Uh, and when it was created, it was, it was separated from the Port of Houston Authority uh, by the state legislature. And when that was done, uh, there were 11 duties in section 66017 of the transportation code uh, that gave the duties of the pilot board. And the duties include establishing the number of pilots necessary to provide uh, adequate pilot services for each Harris County port, uh, accept applications for pilot licenses and certificates and determine whether each applicant uh, meets the qualifications of a pilot, uh, submit those lists to the governor, uh, establish pilotage rates, approve locations for pilot stations, establish times during which pilot services will be available, hear and determine complaints relating to the conduct of pilots, recommend to the governor each pilot whose license or certificate should not be renewed or should be revoked, adopt rules and issue orders to pilots or vessels when necessary to secure efficient pilot uh, services, at 10, investigate in, uh, Institute investigations or hearings for casualties, accidents, or other actions uh, that violate the uh, chapter here and provide penalties to be imposed for, for any violations uh, by the pilots. Now, these things cannot be done by myself alone. We have several committees that I'm gonna go through right now that uh, assist the pilot board in doing this. Now, uh, as you know, we are moving forward. Uh, there was a transition period and uh, we're kind of getting our sea legs going here. Uh, and our first executive director is Captain uh, Tyler Gavis. Uh, he's a, a 2007 graduate of the United States Merchant Marine Academy. Uh, he's got extensive experience. He has a master's unlimited license, uh, master towing license, uh, first class pilotage uh, uh, for vessels less than 2,000 gross tons uh, for the, upon the Houston Ship Channel. Uh, he sailed as a deck officer on numerous vessels and we kind of stole him from the Houston Port Authority when we transitioned. Uh, he, he was at the Port of Houston and uh, he agreed to come over and assist us with the pilot. Uh, now, as you saw earlier, one of the things that the pilot board uh, does is make recommendations for uh, for renewal of pilot branch pilot uh, pilots and makes those recommendations to the governor. We do that with a committee that's called the uh, application review committee, uh, and and that committee uh, handles those uh, those items uh, necessary to appoint uh, pilots and uh, gives us the information we need to review those applications. That committee is head up, headed up by Captain Stephen Polk. He's a 1997 graduate of Texas A&M Maritime Academy. He's got ex extensive experience on container ships, uh, motos, towing vessels and products. Uh, presently at the Seaman Church Institute, he uh, assists with the uh, uh, simulation and, and uh, uh, and uh, simulation with uh, the tugs and the, the uh, vessels. Uh, he's doing a fantastic job with that. It's, it's not an easy job going through all the applications. Uh, he takes it very seriously and we appreciate all the help that he's given the pilot board. Uh, now on this review committee with Captain Polk is Captain Robert Thompson, the presiding officer of the Houston Pilots. Captain Gilbert Martinez, the Houston, uh, Houston branch pilot, uh, Captain Marcus Woodring, uh, who is the Chief Port Security and Emergency Operations Officer for the Port of Houston, uh, Captain Joe Hill, Marine Insurance Manager for Valero, Pat Stewart, the Chief Executive Officer for Buffalo Marine Services, 
and uh, Miss Sally James, uh, Dr. Sally James, uh, PhD with uh, San Jacinto College. This is a very important committee because this is where uh, we get the entry level pilots coming into the, to the uh, uh, port of Houston. And we need to find the best and the brightest to be pilots here in Houston. And so they do a fantastic job. What we have to do as a maritime community, and I'm, I'm gonna need you to help me do this, is uh, we need to get the word out that we want more people to apply so that we can find the best and the brightest and we can open up opportunities for all, uh, for all people here in Harris County. Uh, the next committee is the uh, Pilot Board Investigation and Review Committee. And they uh, look at the casualties and incidents uh, that may happen on the ship channel. Uh, I see this more, not so much as a punitive type of committee, but a committee to get lessons learned. Uh, it's very important that we, we do not pilots uh, uh, when there's, when there's uh, not uh, conscious uh, errors uh, made. Uh, you want people to feel that they can do their job and that they can do it uh, uh, without uh, excessive discipline. Uh, the pilots here are very uh, work. They take it very seriously. And so unless it's something very, very out of the ordinary, we need to look at lessons that we can learn from incidents more so than Uh, the present uh, PBRC ch uh, chairman is uh, Captain David Foray. He has extensive maritime experience. He holds a Merchant Marine uh, cre uh, credential as a master of towing vessels. He's got over 40 years experience in the towing industry. Uh, he formed the Action Group in 1999, a regulatory compliance and training firm. He's been on the PBRC for over 20 years. Uh, he's uh, also chair of the Lone Star Harbor uh, Safety Committee, uh, and uh, he's a founding member of the Towing Vessel Inspection Bureau. And with him on the committee, again, is Captain Robert Thompson, the presiding officer of the Houston Pilots, Captain Michael Curtis, a Houston branch pilot, Captain Stephen Nelson, a Houston branch pilot, Captain Mark, Marcus Woodring, again, the Chief Port Security and Emergency o Operations Officer with the port. Captain Rich Russell, Head of Offshore and Global Lightering for AET, Inc. Uh, Captain Paul Brown, a retired Houston uh, branch pilot. Uh, Captain Mike Usher, a retired manager of pilot administration for the Port of Houston. And Tom Marion, General Counsel for Buffalo Marine Services. Now, who are the pilots? Uh, there's about a hundred pilots right now. Uh, they, uh, they safely guide more than, uh, they safely have more than 20,000 movements. Uh, it's been down a little with the pandemic. Now it's been, a, with the pandemic, it's been like 18,000, 19,000. Uh, we're probably one of the largest ports in the United States. Uh, one of the busiest ports, uh, one of the most, uh, demanding pilotages uh, up the 52 uh, mile uh, channel. And it's governed by the uh, Board of Pilot Commissioners for the ports of Harris County. Uh, this is a uh, picture of a pilot vessel going out to one of the ships. Uh, this is a ship up in the Turning Basin area. Uh, it's interesting that you should know that the pilots are navigating these uh, large vessels uh, the width of the channel is 530 feet. Uh, we have a dredge depth of 45 feet. There's also a barge lane, which is uh, very important, which uh, take barge traffic out of the ship channel, which uh, kind of eases the burden on the pilots uh, with the barge traffic. And uh, here's an example of a vessel with a barge in the Houston ship channel. Uh, here's another picture of a vessel going by the container port. And uh, 
you know, people talk about the Texas chicken and pilotage, and this is uh, vessels approaching each other. The pilots uh, have, have a lot of training. They go through training at uh, Grenoble in France. It's a ship simulation, and they take a lot of uh, interest in that. Their training program now is three years uh, to, from start to be a deputy to become a full pilot. Uh, they have to make many trips on many different vessels to uh, during that period to become a full pilot. Uh, this is a, a picture of uh, what the dynamics of going uh, through the Houston Ship Channel is. And you have uh, bow cushion and you also have suction dynamics that work on the vessels as they meet each other. And you see the bow cushion pushing the vessels off each other, the vessels, the Pilots have to, uh, to make sure that there's safe maneuvers in the channel. And here's uh, showing how the vessels come back to each other. There's a large, uh, at, at the stern of the vessel, after the vessels meet and, and uh, pass, there's a large area uh, that uh, the vessels uh, uh, fall into after they pass each other. And uh, here's a just a uh, graphic of the size of the vessels that are now coming into the Houston Ship Channel. Uh, one of the challenges, I think, for the pilots and for the Houston Ship Channel will be the new vessels coming up from the Panama Canal uh, and, uh, and being able to make them uh, safely transit the, uh, the Houston Ship Channel and maintain competitive, competitiveness in the maritime world. Uh, here's a vessel, one of the larger container vessels uh, headed for Barber's Cut. And this concludes my part of the speech here. And I always like to say, I may have long left the sea, but the sea has never left me. <laughs> All right. If we can start. Come on over. <laughs> okay. So what, what we're going to do now is we're just going to... Uh, as we're trying out, how do we do these uh, these hybrid things to get back? So instead of me being on a different uh, camera and, and you being in a different location, we thought we'd try this by our side chat. So we have a, a mic between us. And I'm gonna start out again, reminding you that on your Q&A portion of the, the screen, you can upload questions to ask the chairman. Uh, I'll start with some ones that already came in and then we'll see what you, what you pepper us with to go from there, okay? Okay, I look, I look forward to the All right, so the first, the first question uh, came in yesterday from Clarence Gray. I think he knows you. And he said he's interested in knowing what the Port of Houston will be like in the next 10 years, specifically in the areas of economic strength, environmental stewardship, and community relationships. Yeah. That's a, a very broad question, but I'm hoping, and I believe, uh, all of the maritime community wants the Port of Houston to be the most competitive uh, in the nation and to bring in a lot of uh, vessels and containers and uh, cargo, uh, petrochemical cargo to make the port the best, the best in the nation. Uh, we see, uh, I see that as being a uh, uh, fundamental uh, hallmark that we need to work on. But more importantly, we need to make sure the port is safe and that the port is uh, that that the terminal the the port stays open for traffic. Okay, great. Um, when when you were making this transition from Port Houston commissioners over to your board, uh, the first couple of meetings were a lot of discussion, a lot of interest as people were trying to figure out what you were doing and how it was going to work differently. And one of the things that was, came up quite a bit was how is this going to be funded? Um, and it kind of kicked sideways for a couple of meetings until the Houston pilots came forward and said that they would support the administrative part, which you've already explained why we need to uh, vet the pilot applications through the investigations. There's a lot of paperwork that goes to make sure that you can make your decisions. But they said, hey, we will, just to get things transitioned, we will front the cost for the administration for two years. And, have, uh, what is your comment on how this thing is going to be funded going forward? It seems to be the elephant in the room when people. Right. 
So uh, yeah, it absolutely is. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Commissioner Roland Garcia and uh, uh, Francis uh, Dias and the other members of the transition committee that that worked so hard in getting us to where we are today. Um, I, what I see us doing is uh, working with the pilots, uh, the shippers, uh, and formulating what we're going to do as far as uh, a user fee, how we're going to do it. Uh, nobody can uh, believe that we can do this for free. So we have to have a user fee to, fu to fund this. And in the uh, legislation, uh, there is uh, legislation that says basically we can do what, what is necessary and other ports have the same kind of, kind of language. So what I envision is getting together with all members of the maritime community and figuring out the best way to do a user fee, whether it's a, uh, a fee that uh, the uh, shippers pay on a per transit basis, or it's a fee that a user fee that's paid by the tonnage of the vessel, uh, uh, or how we will have that fee. Uh, and, you know, the pilots have, have been very uh, uh, gracious uh, because they understand the need to have um, the, uh, the pilot board up and running because they need to get their licenses uh, to the governor and everything signed off on. But uh, th for them to continue that, I, I don't see us doing that. Uh, if we, uh, one thing that I will note, and I'm going to be open to hearing everything from everybody about it, is if we do it, if try to continue the way the pilots are doing it, it's going to ultimately end up being a increase, a rate increase uh, for the pilots, and the users are going to pay it that way. I think it's much better if the users pay it on a per use basis. But as, uh, as I say, the, the board will decide, I'm one vote on the board, and, and we, we will listen to all of the maritime interests. We'll listen to the unions, we'll listen to the shippers, we'll listen to the pilots, and a decision will, will then be made. Right, so they, they gave you kind of a glide path into figuring this out for two years. That, that yeah. Helpful. They, they did. I, and I thought that was very uh, uh, a very important step uh, by uh, the pilots and doing that, because I think they see the, the need to continue the pilot board going. But I think going forward, we will have to figure it out and we have to do it as a community. Uh, some people will have to pay and some people, you know, will will uh, pay a little more. It just depends on how we figure it out. But we want to listen to everybody. We will have a, 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 at least one public meeting, if not two, about how to do that. And we'll be, we will be doing this very soon. Okay. That's great. I mean, a lot of what industry wants is predictability. And when you make a transition to a new board like this, it gets them nervous because they don't know how it's going to happen, but it seems like it's going to roll out logically. It gives the, the commissioners time to get their feet in the chairs and figuring out how they want to, how they think is the best way to go and with the industry input, right? Absolutely. I mean, we have to have the industry input. We have to have uh, from all the stakeholders. Uh, and, you know, we have to do that so that we can try to remain as competitive as possible and uh, do it as collegially as possible. Okay. I know um, with any board, a lot of goes on uh, outside the meetings and subcommittees and things like that. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is kind of, I'm going to name one of your subcommittees and see if you can give me like where you, what your thoughts are, the vision of that subcommittee, where do you see them plugging in? Because I think it's important for people to understand the breadth and depth of the pilot board and what you're trying to do. So I'll start with the navigation subcommittee. Yes, that committee will be out in the community. Uh, we will be going to like the Long Star, Safe, uh, Long Star Safety Committee. Uh, it will be uh, uh, working with the different stakeholders uh, finding out what are the important things uh, that are, are happening navigation-wise. Uh, they're, they're on that committee. There are uh, uh, people from the pilots. There's a person from the pilots. There's a person from uh, West Gulf uh, 
uh, maritime that we'll want on there, a person from the Coast Guard. Uh, and uh, there's a chair, pilot uh, board chair that's on that. And it will merely be advising us uh, what is going on uh, and, and uh, giving us input so we, we don't have to go to all of the different safety okay. committee meetings. The um, next one is a legislative subcommittee. Yeah, uh, I think that's an important committee that's headed up by uh, the mayor uh, uh, that uh, will look in if there's legislation that needs to be passed uh, for the uh, port, uh, the Houston Ship Channel uh, that affects the pilotage in any manner. And they will work with the, uh, you know, the various uh, lobbyists and legislatures to try to get legislation through if we need it. Um, and they'll keep us up to date on legislation that is being proposed right. uh, by other parties so that we'll know what's going on. Right, so let's say Beaumont or Corpus is wanting to enact some pilotage thing. How does that affect you? And you know what you're doing uh, could be done more efficiently with different language. And, and one of the things that I, you know, just emphasize is that the, the pilotage is a state run thing. So it goes through Austin. I, I think people think they get a Coast Guard pilot license, it would be federal, but really the no. organization is state run and it's all fed through uh, Austin as far as. And that's a very good, very good point. Uh, the regulation of the pilots is through this pilot board, uh, not through the Coast Guard. Now, the Coast Guard does investigate incidents. Um, it does uh, give, uh, you know, federal licenses, but the pilot, uh, Houston pilots is regulated by this pilot board. Um, and what happens in Austin is very important to us. So, so that, that committee is, is very, very important. Okay. I'm going to jump to the Coast Guard liaison because okay. you brought that up. And yeah, and, and that is probably one of the most important uh, because uh, the Coast Guard uh, does, a, does a great job in the, their investigations. Uh, they uh, handle all of the aids to navigation along the ship channel. Uh, they let us know. I mean, they can close the port down. Uh, the captain of the port, uh, I guess uh, they call it sector, sector commander now, can shut the port down if uh, there's a need uh, to do that. So we have to work hand in hand with the Coast Guard. Uh, and and uh, we'll be changing some of the rules to reflect working hand in hand with the Coast Guard. Uh, at the last pilot board, it came up uh, uh, whether the, the uh, pilot needed to get a uh, uh, health certificate, uh, you know, basically verified by the Coast Guard and then come and get another one by the pilot board. So we have to work that out so it's the most efficient for the pilots and we're not having downtime for the pilots doing things that are kind of administrative. Right, as I understood that listening to the meeting, um, every year you have an anniversary for your medical, for your Coast Guard license and you have to do that. And then every so often when you're renewing your license to the pilot organization, you have to have a medical thing. And I think the standard uh, procedure that they were following was the Coast Guard uh, physical that year would count as your thing. But the actual regulations were like plus within three months of the decision. And so right. you're actually cleaning up some some things that were not that were a little bit loose. Right. Right. And, right. And, and we have to kind of make that so it can be done in the most efficient way. Right. And, and we're not uh, hindering people, making them take an exam uh, four months out for one license and then, you know, 60 I days later for another. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the medical thing is important to make sure that Absolutely. they can do the job. I mean, they're climbing up the side of a vessel. There's, it's, it's not like, you know, uh, a passive job at a desk or something. You have to be healthy and yeah. it's good for, you want to make sure that that pilot is, uh, you know, the healthy and physically able to do the job every year. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, the last one that I see, and maybe there's others I didn't see, but it was the diversity one. And you kind of started a little bit to mention this earlier. 
Yeah, yeah. We, we need to increase the diversity uh, of the uh, pilot so it more reflects um, the composition of our nation and of our of our county. Uh, presently, it's my understanding there's uh, two African American pilots, uh, four women pilots. Um, I think uh, four uh, Hispanic pilots uh, that identify as Hispanic pilots uh, out of uh, out of basically a hundred, uh, and we have to do better. Uh, but I understand the, cha the challenges the pilots have uh, with uh, the pipeline, and I, and I'll need you know members of the maritime community to help us increase the pipeline. Uh, part of that is. Uh, you know, entry level jobs into shipping, uh, either deep sea or brown, what we call brown water, so that people can go up the up the ladder and get the necessary experience to be a uh, captain, uh, unlicensed, have an unlicensed li uh, uh, license or a thousand ton license, so that they can uh, have the six years experience necessary to be a pilot. So you know, it's 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 kind of all hands on deck necessary to get this done, but I can see it happening. Uh, it, it won't happen overnight, but we can do it. Right, so let's kind of I thought about this is like, <clears throat> so there's four female pilots right now. We know there's, you know, out of a hundred, that's 4%. And so uh, you think that's not representative of the of community and we understand that and, and we would like more in the, you know, diversity in the industry, but if you go out there and you look at from chief mates to captains, I don't even think there's 4% female in those positions. So you're talking about going all the way back to the schools and encouraging people that this is a profession that they should follow and encouraging it. And it's almost like the, the, the porch got an idea of this several years ago, many now, but this start maritime high schools and what CN Jack is doing and things like that to get people to go to school right here in Texas and figure out like, look at that, that's a good job, paying job. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have to start in the high schools and uh, we have to, the pilots, uh, they have a, they've been very engaged with uh, a couple of the high schools here. Uh, we are uh, one of the uh, projects we have going on now is creating an internship and uh, we'll be working with the pilots with that. We'll have be bringing people in to work with the pilot board. Uh, and we'll also be engaging with the high schools. Um, Yates has a, uh, has a maritime program. Uh, and uh, there's another school, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, uh, has a Stephen, Stephen F. Austin has a maritime program. We'll be engaging with those uh, to try to just get the word out. It, it has to start early, and it's going to take a while, but but we can get there. Yeah, I think the the maritime education component has really moved along in the last ten dozen years or so. San Jack and Texas A&M and Galveston and things like that, and just getting people aware that these are you know careers careers and where you need to go and things yeah. like that I yeah well, one of the things is that most of these to become a captain uh, or a pilot uh it, it's a stem career it's a science technology engineering mathematics kind of career and so uh you gotta maybe even start in junior high school uh where people are getting the math classes uh the the physics and those kind of classes so that they can get into the pipeline. And, and so we have to start early. And, uh, you know, uh, I think if we put it out there in the universe, then we can make it happen. The, the sea base down in Galveston is, is also a luxury that we have here. And I don't know if it's been tapped in totally, but I think you take a young person, you take them down there and let them sail and just find the excitement, the freedom of being out in the water and things like that. And then come back and say, if you want to do this for a living, you could start at one of these two options at, at a San Jack or a Texas A&M or go the route you did through Kings Point and things like that. Those are open and, and we're trying to get the best and the brightest. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, to, to navigate these vessels uh, in the Houston Ship Channel and understand that, that, that dynamics, uh, as I pointed out in the, the uh, presentation, 
uh, of the bank, the, the bow cushion and the bank suction and all of these different things, um, you, you really have to have some training to do that. And uh, uh, we, you know, we, we are starting at, like I say, the outreach program, we're gonna have the internship program. The internship program will include uh, Kings Point, uh, Texas A&M, San Jacinto, uh, Texas Southern University has a maritime program to get people involved. All of those people may not end up being a pilot, uh, but they'll be better versed in what the pilots do by the internship program with the not only the pilot organization, but the whole maritime, whole maritime industry Absolutely. benefits from the awareness that these are good paying jobs in the east side of Houston. Yes. And, uh, how do you get to them? It's not, you know, it's open to them. It, it, you know, it's interesting. You bring that up. It's that one of the things is the port is a hidden asset. <laughs> I mean, it's huge. The, the, the uh, impact it has on not only Texas, but the nation. And many people here in Houston are not aware of the jobs in the port. They're not aware of the longshore jobs. They're not aware of the you know, clerk jobs, uh, the uh, port agents, uh, so many different jobs here in the port. I did think that I know you spent a lot of time in Panama, which is always interesting too, because I had spent time down there. But when, when I lived in Panama, the goal of everyone in Panama was work at the Panama Canal. Yes. And you, when they had a job opening, they would have 500 people apply. And they had people with doctorates and everyone wanted to get whatever job was open at the canal. Yeah. You know, and here it, it's, people don't see yeah, it. People don't see the same thing. But down there, it was that you wanted to work at the Panama Canal if you were Panamanian. Yeah. And, and um, you geared yourself for that. And here we don't have that same optics. Yeah. We literally have billions of dollars come into this 52 mile port. And uh, the, the infrastructure along the ship channel is huge. Uh, I think in your last presentation, you talked about how it was a manufacturing center. And it is. Uh, you know, all of the petrochemicals that are manufactured and come out of the port, um, it's, it's huge. And so we have to get that word out uh, more to people of, of what the Port of Houston uh, and the Houston Ship Channel provides to the state of Texas. Okay. I don't really see any questions coming in okay. yet. So I don't know if I'm missing them or am I? Oh, okay. There they go. I got a tap on my screen. Okay. Um, this one's from Robert Morgan. He's with uh, Texas Southern University, as you may know. Um, what is the minimum time required to request the service of a Houston pilot for a vessel movement? I think is that 48? Four hours. Four, four hours. Yeah. Okay. It's four hours. Yeah. Yeah. So they will move within four hours, but most of the agents go in earlier than that. Yeah. And you, you talk about uh, Panda. Uh, Robert Morgan was a commander in the Navy. And uh, he would allow me to come down and uh, 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 set, set in for him if he had special assignments. For oh. the Navy. That's how I would. Oh, you knew him down there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 He, he was the commander of Military Sea Lift Command, Panama. Okay. Yeah. Everything six, six degrees of separation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to take his second question there. Then we'll move. He says, is there a nighttime or daylight restriction on vessel movements in the Houston ship channel? Well, you know, we, we leave the piloting up to the, to the pilots mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the Coast Guard also can set restrictions, uh, but the pilots know if they can move the vessels and uh, there's, you know, uh, we have to use their professional uh, judgment on that. There's no just rule, you, you stop at two o'clock in the morning, no. Uh, the port is a 365, 24-7 operation, and uh, we have to leave that to the professional judgment of the pilots. Yeah, I think the, the, the general rules they have are published on their website as to what length. If you're over a certain length, they want to move you in daylight. So, And that's the same with like the Panama Canal, the, the, the large vessels, the, you know, because the tolerance is so small, they want a maximum safety movement daylight so they can see as much as possible, yeah. which is what 
every pilot organization does all the way around the coast that the big ones are, are going to move when the when the safety conditions are best. So, yeah. yeah. And, and that's some of the things, the challenges that we'll have in the future with uh, vessels coming up, larger vessels coming up from Panama Canal uh, that uh, the, uh, the pilots uh, uh, and are already working at uh, looking at simulations, uh, you know, talking to, to other pilot organizations and other organizations about how do you move these larger vessels. I think one of the things that they were talking about with the Project 11, which is the deepening and widening project that is coming forth, is if they go from a 530 foot wide channel to a 700 foot wide channel, the some of the larger vessels can move a little bit earlier than they could now with the daylight restriction. The daylight restriction in, in our port would be, you know, could be like eight hours in the fall or the winter when there's not much sunlight and, and it would open up obviously in the summer to more hours. But that window is important to get the bigger ships out of here. As you say, yeah. there are not more ships, there's bigger ships. Yeah. And so the wider channel opens the daylight window up for us to, for the pilots to move. You bring up a very important point that we absolutely need to uh, deepen and widen the Houston ship channel to remain competitive. If we do not remain competitive, the cargo will go someplace else. Um, there's other ports in the Gulf that the cargo can go to, or even the East Coast. So we have to remain competitive, and that's one of the things we have to do. And as we deepen and widen the channel, we'll have to figure out you know, the best way to move, move the vessels, right? And then you're right. It comes down to simulations and stuff now with a 700 foot channel, where do the pilots feel comfortable and doing safely? Yes. And then, and then you'll sort of be overseeing how all that changes. Yeah. And the pilots will let us know. I mean, uh, uh, they, they are the professional mariners. Uh, they are the ones with the local knowledge. And, you know, we will be listening to industry uh, we'll be listening to the pilots and then the board will be making, you know, their determinations, but, you know, we have to, we have to listen. Right. Yeah. Um, so there is a question here. Good morning. My name is Maribel Rodriguez. I have a staffing company, Sunshine Personnel Solutions, a little ad for her. Will there be an opportunity for staffing services? N not, the pot, not with the pilot board. Yeah. Uh, I'm not, uh, sure what staffing services he provides, but I think that's more a question for your organization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> port Bureau. Come join the Port Bureau. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am getting the thing that we're, we, this has flown by and, and yeah. enjoyed talking to you. I, I want to thank you for your leadership of stepping up, someone with your vast experience, both in the leadership and the, and the maritime it's tough to come by. And, yeah. and to me, your vision for the place is right on. So thank you for coming today and kind of introducing yourself to, to the community. Thank you for uh, spending time with the Port Bureau. We appreciate it. I, I appreciate you having me and I look forward to working with all the stakeholders in the maritime community here. Thank you. As, as we close up today, I just want to reiterate our next Commerce Club in May, the second Thursday will be a hybrid event. If you're a member, we are going to up to 100 into the room. And then we're going to do obviously the virtual thing to broadcast it. It's Carrie Trough from Shell talking about shipping. She is the general manager for America Shipping, but she is going on to be the general manager for shipping worldwide for Shell. Her opinion really is important to understand what she sees the future for shipping. Come join us. I think it's going to be fantastic to uh, hear what she thinks is ahead for shipping. So until then, we'll close with that. Thank you for joining us. And that concludes our webinar for today.